Hey guys, so last week when I was coming on to shift, I didn't walk into a hurricane of craziness like I usually do. Uh, it was quiet and there were no new patients to see and the patients that were already there had their disposition already established so I didn't need to do anything for the, like, the first 30 minutes of my shift. And then the radio came in and they said, oh, there's a 60 something year old male coming in with chest pain. So I start looking up this patient and notice he hasn't even seen a doctor in over 10 years, at least at the establishment I was working at. And then I realized the radio just tuned in, ST elevations on the EKG via EMS. So then I'm like, okay, let's call a STEMI, get cardiology to come down to the emergency department and get things going. So we cleared out a room, um, we got all of our equipment ready, got our intubation for possible collapse and went from there. So when the patient got there, he actually looked pretty comfortable and stable. Um, we got a troponin on him initially and of course it was elevated. We got a Kim A and there was no electrolyte abnormalities. And while we were getting a 12 lead EKG, we were looking at the EMS EKG. And about that time we noticed that he had ST elevations and leads 2, 3 AVF as well as V3 through V6. And I looked back up at the patient after looking at his EKG and noticed his eyes rolling in the back of his head. Um, I looked up at the monitor we had connected to him and realized he was in a little VTAC. Uh, felt for a pulse, there was a pulse, and by the time we could feel a pulse, he converted back into a regular rhythm. But by that time, we were hooking him up to monitors, um, hooking him up to pads, and we were ready to intubate him since he seemed super unstable. And about five minutes later, he went to another run of VTAC pulseless this time, and we did the ACLS protocol and gave him amiodarone and epi. We got him in and out of rhythm and eventually back up to the cath lab. Um, it was a long process, but he did go to the cath lab, and he survived, actually. But it was a very long process of going in and out of VTAC, and we did an awesome job of bringing him back up to the cath lab. But for this video, I want to talk about when you might see SC elevations and the coronary arteries involved, since his case was actually a pretty interesting case. So let's get started. So after the cath lab was done with this patient and had reperfused his heart, they called back and just let us know that he did have coronary blockage in his right coronary artery, which showed those inferior lead ST elevations, but he also had a blockage in his left circumflex artery which showed the ST elevations and the lateral leads. And this was a pretty interesting case because we were just kind of wondering what was going on. There weren't really any reciprocal depressions. So I want to transfer you over to a picture of the heart to show you this process and how it correlates to the EKG changes. When looking at the heart, the placement of the coronary arteries relates to the EKG changes you may see in certain leads. Stemming from the aorta are the left and right coronary arteries. The left coronary artery splits into the left anterior descending and the left circumflex arteries. The right coronary artery splits into the posterior descending and marginal branches. This is a picture of what I just summarized in the last picture. Learning this can help you really understand the ischemic changes that you may see on an EKG. This picture summarizes the EKG changes with the coronary arteries that may be affected in myocardial infarctions. Leads 2, 3, and AVF relate to an inferior myocardial infarction involving the right coronary artery and sometimes the left circumflex. Leads V1 through V4 correlate to an anterior septal myocardial infarction involving the left anterior descending or otherwise called the widowmaker. Involvement of this coronary artery results in death more often than others. Leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6 correlate to lateral MIs, involving the left circumflex artery and sometimes the diagonal of the left anterior descending artery. Posterior MIs will present most commonly with ST depressions and leads V1 through V4 on a 12 lead EKG. If you see this, you can always add on the leads V7 through 9 to see if there are any ST elevations for the posterior MI that you may suspect. Another great thing to remember is the evolution of an ST-elevated myocardial infarction. 
So the first thing that you might see in an EKG when a patient has an occluded coronary artery is tall symmetric peaked T waves. And then you will see the J point elevation with the remaining concavity afterwards. And then after that you will see the classic tombstone effect of the ST elevations plus the merging with the T wave. And then after that you have Q waves. Just remember this in patients because you might want to repeat their EKG if you see these symmetric T waves. Usually a T wave has a more concavity and asymmetric quality about it. So if you see these types of T waves, it might be in your best interest to repeat your EKG. You wouldn't want to misdiagnose an in STEMI for a possible STEMI and delay catheterization. Remember, time is muscle, guys. Mm -hmm.